Okay, so we've laid out the four XL2 panels here. They're laid on the floor here. It says to place uh, two each of these. Uh, basically, they're like a bushing in these holes. They click in place. Uh, so there's a total of eight. So I'm going to do that. Looks like that hole is not completely cleared out. So we'll try to push it in, but we may need to clear it out. All right. Okay, so I've got four more here. Just going to put those in there until we're ready to click. And that one as well is not cleared out, but it seems to be working. Okay, so step one is putting all the bushings in the first panels. Click, we're done. the two J5 panels that will go on the back side of the cabinet and you'll notice in the picture it shows these tangs right here so you have a tang on this one and a recessed area here and you have a tang on this side and a recessed area here and that's how these two panels come together they kind of lock together but they won't be secured until they're in these lower pins and then we'll come in with the outside panels to secure them in place. At the second side of the panel here, you notice there's two holes here, and they align to the pin here on the base, and this larger rectangle one. And it'll match up with the side here. So I want to line up the pins first, get those close, and then start to wiggle that down. And while I do that, I want to align it to the back panel before I push down. You'll notice that this is tight. This panel is a little bit loose, but it'll start to tighten up as we add more and more of the frame together. So that's all the way down. You'll notice there's a little bit of a gap here. That's okay because we've got another piece that will come in and fill in that space. Okay, now we're going to put the, the large uh, back in here and you can see that the shape of these pins align to the shape of the holes. That'll help you guide it in. So we just need to Position things in the back panels from step two. Line them before you start forcing them in. They should go in pretty easy, but there's always a little bit of friction. So you always want to line it up. There's the click, so it looks like it went in straight. So we're going to now install XL10. There's two of them and you'll notice on here again the pin size and the hole size should match up but there's also an extra tang right here that will go in and lock in there. So we're going to line that up, make sure everything's positioned right before we push down because once it's in there you're not going to get that out. You're going to have to work that out. So that's how that one goes in.
So it's important that you check all your parts. We're looking at a lot of screws here. We've got 16 of the small ones. We've got four of these here. And then we've got eight of the larger ones. And then we also have eight of these hinges. The other thing is to be careful when you take particularly small screws and a power tool. It's easy to over drill into the plastic. So sometimes it's okay to set that up but then finish with a smaller screwdriver so you can actually feel it seat and you don't overdrive it in. Okay, I wanted to just point out that you've got this tab right here on this piece. You notice it's right there and on the picture. This is the inside of the door. The tab is going to face out. And when you rotate that, for that to be out, you'll notice these buttons right here line up with the holes here and here in the door. So that'll help, help you align those two. So just align the pins. Make sure that that hook is on the outside. Line these up. Square them all up, just kind of work your way around and squeeze them together. There you go. Okay, so after we get the brackets mounted in from the previous step, the screws are secure. We're going to rotate the hinge forward so it'll align with the holes in the frame here. All we're going to do is we're going to position the four pins of the hinge against the face just like that and then we have the four screws and I'll just back up right here the screws are going to go in the second hole here not the first one the second one so make sure you have it inserted all the way and then through the bushing place the screw in until you feel the hole and then you can start to secure that as this just like this so I can feel the threads. Okay, I've got the first screw in and I had to position that right, but I noticed I didn't screw it all the way in. What I want to do is work down the pins to make sure that they can all get threaded into the hinge holes. So I'll go back down to this one. Okay, I feel that one. I'll start that screwing in. So now I'm getting better alignment for all the pins. And you just work your way down. There's that one, and then finally I'll go back up to this one and find the hole in the hinge. Once I've got that, I can start screwing it in. Okay, now I've got all the pins in. They're finger tight, so now I'm going to come back with a screwdriver, and I'm going to just snug them down a little bit. I'll do that top one, then I'll work my way down until they're all secure in place.